Our next presentation bears the title, Start Caring About Being Barren, Why Women Should Pursue Fertility. Please welcome Tori Fay. As a girl, you dreamed about two things, having a family and serving your country, just like the generations before you. You arrived at the place where your future begins, West Point Military Academy, ready to serve your country and make your family proud. By the time your four years at the academy were completed, you were engaged to be married and would serve a tour of duty in Iraq. Your body was exposed to chemicals and harsh labors you thought you could handle, but you continued to press on, knowing that one day you would be able to come home and start a family. You were seen by your country, commanders, and soldiers as a star, commanding your unit and earning a medal of honor for your bravery. You arrived home to your now husband and began to decorate a nursery, a sweet safari of the most exotic, beautiful animals, crowned with a mobile of giraffes, lions, zebras, anything you could imagine for your future child's sweet fading eyes to look at as they fall into a deep slumber. Two years of you and your husband attempting to conceive pass, and still no luck. After going to the doctor, your husband was relieved to receive a clean bill of health. But wait, this must mean that the issue lies within you. You were capable enough to lead your unit into battle, yet you can't carry a child? You remember Iraq, the chemical exposure and intense physical trauma you experienced there. Was the satisfaction and praise from your country worth losing your ability to procreate? You pray as you sit in your decorated nursery with your Medal of Honor in one hand and was meant what was meant to be your baby's first blanket in the other. Would you have chosen differently if you'd known the consequences? Barrenness is something 10 to 15 percent of women in the world are burdened with today. While some causes of barrenness are natural, some women subject themselves to situations that could lead to barrenness. For example, women who enlist in the armed forces are three times more likely to suffer infertility due to the strain exerted on their bodies in these military situations. I argue that while some women do not see the value of their childbearing abilities, Childbearing is an essential part of motherhood, womanhood, and should therefore be protected at all costs. The importance of women pursuing fertility is a command from the Lord stated in Genesis 1.28, saying, be fruitful and multiply. This shows us that procreation is an important part of our identities as we play our roles in filling the kingdom of the Lord. Every person has two aspects of their identity that which is created and graced. A created identity is what God made humans to be in the garden. This includes our bodies and our souls and all of our physical abilities, while our graced identity is our identity of children of the Lord. In a woman's case, her graced identity is being a child of God, while one aspect of her created identity is her ability to bear children. This means, no matter what, the most important part of a woman's identity is her graced identity, and neither fertility nor infertility can take that away. However, our created identities can fade or be lost by our own misconceptions of these gifts from God. If not properly cared for, we could lose our ability to bear children just as we could lose our ability to see or hear. Childbearing is not the entirety of a woman's identity, but it is of high importance. If you are a true woman of God, you cannot discount the command from the Lord to have children by putting yourselves in situations that could lead to barrenness. Some women might not understand the importance of childbearing because they do not believe a woman's identity should be solely dependent upon procreation. And they're correct, it isn't. What I'm claiming is that childbearing is of such importance that women should do whatever they can to protect these abilities. There are some cases of women who cannot naturally procreate and are called to other things. 
Matthew Arbo, a professor and author of Walking Through Infertility, addresses the importance of married couples to follow God's command to have children. Arbo writes, Couples who are open to having children and who do what they can to conceive, but who have not yet succeeded in conceiving, are not violating God's command. While God does command us to be fruitful and multiply in order to fill the earth and glorify him, God does not value a woman as less if she does not have the natural ability to procreate. Rather, he loves her as a child of God, despite any imperfection, just as much as he loves his children with disabilities or illnesses. If we would consider putting our ability to speak or reason in danger to be foolish, why then would we think it is right to endanger our ability to procreate? Women are called to see childbearing as strength and courage, showing our individuality as well as something that no man can biologically do. If women embraced their God-given gift of childbearing and child raising, not only would they feel empowered, but they would be blessed by the greatest gift God could grant anyone, the gift of motherhood. Therefore, I implore you, as women of the Lord, to embrace this gift and allow yourselves to avoid situations that could lead to barrenness and begin filling the kingdom of the Lord. Thank you.